Hi and welcome back to a new video. You might remember the Corsair A500 air cooler, which was launched almost four years ago during CES. And my initial thought back then was that the cooling surface and everything didn't look that great. And then once the reviews came out, it basically showed the exact same thing. That the cooler is delivering an okay performance, but is way too loud and also for the performance, way too expensive. And here we are with the Corsair A115. It seems like Corsair wants to try it again on the air cooling market. And even though I don't have any kind of pricing information, so that is something you will have to figure out yourself at the end of the review. I got it quite early for testing to make sure that I can make this video, but in the end, you will have to figure out yourself if the performance and also the noise level will be fine for the price. But what matters most for me in this video will be How's the performance this time and especially how's the noise level? Today's video is sponsored by Hetzner with the Hetzner AX102 dedicated root server. The base for this incredibly high performance root server is the AMD Ryzen 7950X 3D 16 core processor. Due to 8 cores with 3D vCache and 8 normal Ryzen cores, the AX102 is perfect for both high memory intensive workloads or also workloads that require a high CPU clock. This is also why this server always comes with massive 128GB of DDR5 ECC memory and two 1.92TB NVMe data center SSDs, which can always be extended with extra drives. Depending on your requirements, the server is available in Germany or Finland and always comes with all the Hetzner amenities, such as DDoS protection and very good customer support. Find all information about Hetzner's AX102 down below. Already looking at the packaging, we can see a list of 6x6mm heat pipes. It's a dual tower heatsink with two 140mm fans. So it's kind of reminding me of the Noctua NHD15. The first impression is definitely positive. High quality, surface finish, looks great. Can see the 6x6mm heat pipes on the bottom. Usually there's also thermal paste pre-applied, which I removed simply because we want to use the same thermal paste as testing criteria versus the NHD15. Also, if we turn it back around, when I unpacked it, there was a fan sitting in the center, which doesn't lock in with those normal like clamping things but it's done with a sliding mechanism. For this, we have those small metal yeah, blades things on the side mounted to this fan. And for mounting and removal process, you can remove the fan over this sliding mechanism. The fans are the Corsair AF 140mm fans, which are definitely good fans. They have a very good noise to performance profile, I would say. The second fan doesn't have those fan clips installed yet. That's something we will have to do ourselves to apply the fan to this side or this side. I think it just depends on in which location you want to have your fan. That's maybe why they did not pre-assemble this one. I added those fan clips to the side and then I wanted to slide it on. Unfortunately, it doesn't fit because it's too narrow. So I think the tolerances that course I use for the holes and everything, because I just made sure that the clips align to the side of the fan directly. But I think, yeah, the limiting factor to the side of the fan or the holes is too big. So I'm going to loosen the screws and push it out a little bit. So here you can see what I mean. And this is possible on both sides. And probably if you push both inwards, then it's gonna sit too tight. So yeah, that is something where they, could have used a bit more precision, a bit better tolerances. That's just not tight enough. This way it works and I'm glad that Corsair kept this feature which they had already on the A500. That is definitely something good. It's making the fan installation and removal very convenient and also if you have something in the way like of your motherboard or some memory related stuff, then you can fix them in specific positions. So compatibility wise, that's definitely great. First, we will get some comparison numbers though. For this, I'm going to use, as I mentioned, the Noctua NHD15. Even though it's an older cooler, I think it's still doing very well these days. As a comparison, I set the fans of the NHD15 to have a noise level of 40 dBA from 30 centimeters of distance. And the fans are spinning in this scenario at about 1100 RPM. Our first comparison metric is going to be Cinebench R23 in a loop test, 20 minutes to find out how much heat the cooler can consistently dissipate. 
20 minutes of testing are over and we can see an average power draw of the CPU and thus also the dissipated heat of 278.5 watt. By the way, this was tested on a 13900KS, basically running stock, but just thermally limited by the cooler. You can see just peaking always at 100 degrees Celsius and always thermal throttling. Also means the better you can cool the CPU, the more performance you will get. I now waited a little bit for the CPU cooler to cool down to get as close as possible to the room temperature and I will now just run a single R23. And you can see how it directly peaks onto 100 degrees Celsius. And the cooler in the single run can dissipate about 315 watt. And in the end the score is 38,800 points. By the way, I also tested this with our prototype. This is an upgrade heat spreader for uh, the Intel platform. And that's also a reason why the 13900KS can dissipate so much heat in this, yeah, in this scenario. It doesn't matter for the test, I just wanted to be transparent on the testing setup. And uh, it's just going to be the same scenario for both coolers. But the 13900KS underneath is obviously deleted and running with liquid metal. I would call this a typical mounting solution for any kind of air cooler. We have the back plate that goes on the back side of the motherboard, some standoffs to fix it from the front. Then we have these that go on top of uh, the standoffs, will be fixed down with the thumb nuts and then on these screws you will mount the air cooler. So it's pretty much the same to the Noctua cooler as well. And all of this is packed in a lot of tiny bags. At least someone is having fun with them. It was easy and quick to install these brackets. Cooler is in place, has no RGB, still looks good I think. And even for Corsair standards, you are not forced to use anything like IQ or like Corsair Link. And again, I adjusted the fan speed of this cooler to match 40 decibel in 30 centimeters distance. And the fan speed is almost the same as on the NHD 15. It's also 1100 RPM. Test is running again and we will be back once the 20 minutes of testing are over. One thing that triggers me a little bit, and I'm not sure if this just happened during mounting the cooler because I didn't notice this prior to fixing it on the motherboard, but it just looks like this part of the cooler is a little bit bent to the right side for whatever reason. One more interesting aspect is that Corsair, at least according to the marketing material, is using 90 cooling fins that are nickel plated. To me this looked, looks like powder coated or something or like painted, but this doesn't look like nickel to me. Hmm. They also call this a compact dual tower cooler. Which, like, that, that's not compact, right? Hmm. Here we have the result. After 20 minutes of testing, the cooler was able to dissipate constantly 275.2 watt, which is roughly 3. watt less than the Noctua NHD15. Again, we want to check what kind of Cinebench score we get with this cooler. As expected though, again, straight 100 degrees Celsius under load. CPU package power draw is about the same. Also the score, 38,600. That's like 150 points less. I would say that's tolerance in the benchmark. That's pretty much identical. Overall, you can say that Corsair definitely built a nice NHD 15. So you can take this in two different directions. You could say that Corsair was maybe inspired by the NHD 15, because if you just look at the overall design, and that's why I also picked the NHD 15 as a comparison. It's both dual tower cooler, they have almost identical mounting mechanisms, it's the same heatsink layout kind of, so I thought they would maybe behave pretty much identical, which they luckily did. And that's something you can take in two ways. The first way would be that the NHD 15 is a very good air cooler. That also means that this one is a very good air cooler. They perform the same. It's roughly the same RPM on the fans, it's the same noise level, the same cooling, like 3 watt difference, that's basically like mounting, tolerance, whatever. So they both perform the same. It's just nothing new, nothing special. But then subjectively it will depend what you like. And it will also depend on the price of this cooler. Because if I look at the NHD 15 in the black version, it's about 120 euro in Germany. And now it will just depend how much this cooler costs. Maybe it's the same or cheaper, then that would be great. Because you would get the same, but you could choose different styles. What you would prefer, also different, different mounting mechanisms for the fan. I personally prefer this mounting mechanism of the fan over the classic one because it's just easier to adjust once the cooler is installed. Only the thing with the bigger tolerances on the holes is something they could work on, 
but generally speaking I would say that's definitely a solid improvement especially over the A500. It's a good air cooler you can use and it will just depend on the price if it's worth getting this over the NHD15 or maybe not. Quick edit at this point, I finally received pricing which is going to be 125 US dollar in the US and 115 euro in Europe. But Corsair told me they expect the price to be 10% lower in the end in the shops, which would be something positive and at least here in Europe it would be about 5-10% cheaper than the NHD15 at the same performance, so that's good. Thanks for tuning in, see you next time, bye bye.